This panel introduces us to the never-ending debate, imaginary numbers are not real, but they are necessary for quantum mechanics, which by all means describes a very real world. So does that make imaginary numbers real? Imaginary numbers are a set of numbers that exist as means of solving equations, like some cases of polynomial equations that have no real number solution. The imaginary constant i is defined to be equal to the square root of minus 1. Working with i we get some very very elegant and profound equations like Euler's identity, which beautifully connects five fundamental mathematical constants. If you look up quantum mechanics, you will sooner or later encounter the imaginary number i. Other fields like electrical impedance also have it, but unlike those, there are equations in quantum theory with complex numbers that cannot be replaced with real numbers. This means complex numbers in quantum mechanics aren't just there to make calculations easier, but they are there because they're necessary for the theory itself to be consistent. Quantum theory with real numbers only falls in a lot of contradictions and fails to describe the behavior of particles accurately. On the other hand, we can measure the effects of a quantum wave, but we seemingly can't measure complex numbers themselves. So why are the two so deeply connected? The guy who came up with imaginary numbers didn't like calling them imaginary. He preferred the name lateral, because imaginary numbers are quite real. People have always used their 10 fingers to count. That's that's why the further we move away from that intuitive logic, the more difficult it becomes to accept. Solving a plus b equals zero was considered impossible once, before inventing negative numbers that is. In the same fashion, many problems remained unsolved in mathematics for centuries until the invention of imaginary numbers, but unlike fractions or negative numbers, imaginary numbers don't fit in the classic one-dimensional view of numbers. They introduce a new dimension, multiplying a number by another number usually maintains the direction of the result or rotates it by 180 degrees, meaning the result goes to the right when positive or to the left when negative. But multiplying a positive number by the imaginary unit i rotates the result by 90 degrees. Multiplying twice by i means you're multiplying by minus 1, since i squared equals negative 1. So it goes another 90 degrees or 180 degrees in total to the negative section, and so on. This rotational property makes imaginary numbers extremely convenient for representing phase shifts, such as those between two sinusoids. So imaginary numbers are not imaginary in the sense of being unreal, they're just another dimension, a useful configuration to solve problems, problems like wave-particle duality, which requires a mathematical framework that naturally encodes both amplitude and phase, or the probability of an outcome of a collapsing wave function, which involves the interplay of complex probabilities, and the transition from a superposition of states to a single measurable outcome. Imaginary numbers are the hidden gears in this process, ensuring the probabilities we calculate are always real and meaningful. And for those who still don't get it, here is a simpler way to think about it. Saying imaginary numbers don't exist is like saying negative numbers don't exist. Sure, you can't hold negative three apples in your hand, but try telling that to your bank account. Duh. Negative numbers are essential for describing debts, just as complex numbers are essential for describing the quantum world. Both are tools that help us make sense of reality, even if they don't fit neatly into our everyday intuition. 